So around the place, well, particularly in the house, uh, I've got the odd Wi-Fi repeater. So um, and down in the workshop, this is this is the one which I use to extend the range to the 3D printer via OctoPrint. And you know they work fine. Uh, they come into the country for about seven or eight dollars uh, each, and if you buy them locally, they're about well anywhere between about eighty and maybe up to um, two hundred dollars, depending on where you get them from. But they're effectively the same thing. Uh, and I've just been thinking about you know what if you don't have these or you don't want to use these. I mean I don't know what's inside this box, for instance. It's certainly not open source, so God knows what's going on. Um, so there's a couple of alternatives. I mean you could use the ESP32. And uh, maybe I will end up using something like that. But it did occur to me that I had all of these little ESP8266 version 1s around the place. And, um, yeah, look at the tiny little things. I mean, maybe we could use those as a um, some sort of Wi-Fi extender, repeater. I don't know. Um, I do know that when I first started playing with these, which was probably about... Mm, three or four years ago now they're a little bit more expensive these are dirt cheap now for what they do i'll put the uh, i'll put the specs up here but also um they were a bit of a pain at the time to actually program but just relatively recently maybe in the last year or two i have seen a couple of versions of this sort of thing so the idea is that you can plug it into your computer and then hook this up I think this way, there's an arrow there, so I think it actually goes in here. I have to do a little bit of reading about that. And that should allow you to program it. Oh, we have a dodgy pin. Let me just sort that out. Um, yeah, so it should allow you to program it. I'm guessing, I'm hoping by, by just plugging it straight into the, um, the computer's uh, USB port. So that's the plan. But I have so many questions about using this little device as a Wi-Fi repeater. I mean, firstly, could you, um, what sort of range could you get out of it? Because it doesn't have an antenna as such. It's got this uh, this little inbuilt antenna, not an external one, so that could be a limiting issue. I don't know what the power requirements are. I mean, could it sit there, for instance, out in the paddock, hooked up to a battery and a solar panel? Uh, I, one of the things which I'm really interested in is, can you use over-the-air programming? So if you do need to make any changes, Rather than pull it out of a 3D printed box, some weatherproof device, could you, in fact, um, maybe uh, program it or reprogram it over the air? First thing I want to do, though, <laughs> obviously, is get it to blink. So um, I'll um, hook it up to the computer, see if I can get a blinky on there, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the internet tells me that I need to put this from UART mode into programming mode and to do that uh, I need to put a connector across here uh, I'm guessing to pull reset high um, and also need here a button so um, I think did I have a button here yes I did okay so something like this guy here and um, I'll just flatten this out I suppose just put it on one side and uh, connect it up to here and then when you insert this into your computer with the button pressed, it should be in programming mode. So um, that's the next thing to turn this from straight um, UART to programming mode. The other thing which I did find while I was digging around uh, were these little handy dandy adapters for because the the pins are yeah, they're a bit awkward actually. Um, so this adapter means that I could, for instance, I might put these in here, and I should be able to then put them onto a breadboard so that the blinking light can be actually seen. So that will be the a couple of things to do. So solder up this so it's programming, and solder up this so that I can actually uh, get it to blink. All right. So he's putting the headers onto the adapter to start with. And those little mini breadboards are, are pretty cool as well, actually. Yeah, that's a good start. Now we need to put that uh, pull-up wire on. 
and I've just grabbed uh, one of the little breadboard wires and uh, I'll just fit that across. It's pretty hard actually soldering at a height like that. Uh, it wobbles around a fair bit, as do I. But uh, anyway, that's that button done. And then here are the leads that are going to go off to the button. And uh, there's a button itself, so just cut a couple of those off. And solder the other side onto those leads. And just a little adjustment there. And we're good to go. Okay, so I've pressed the button and I've plugged it in. Um, I've just chosen generic ESP8266 module and I don't know what half these things do. I suppose this is for doing some testing at some later stage. It's got OTA, which is... Okay, that's interesting. It says, I'm guessing that if I use OTA, there's 470 kilobytes available because you generally need half the space, or you need double the space, sorry, to actually do the the sketch. So that's interesting. I have to do some more uh, investigation on that. The rest of it, yeah, I don't know if that's right or wrong. Um, it's detected the USB, so that's a good sign. All right, let's just go straight to uploading. And uh, I'm just doing a blinky with a uh, 200 millisecond on and a 500 millisecond off. Oh, well, that's a good sign. Okay, so it's auto detected a flash size at one megabyte, so that's probably good. And uh, it's writing it. So all good signs. And then we'll uh, try that adapter, plug it into a... Um, Yep, that's good. We'll try the adapter, plug it into uh, our breadboard and see if we can actually see some blinking, which would be awesome. So that's good. Got some good blinking going in the background then, uh, according to the timing that I wanted. And note the 3.3 volts as well. Uh, these boards run off that lower voltage, so that's going to be interesting when we, uh, when we get to power it. But um, yeah, we can talk to it. Next, can we get it to do the Wi-Fi thing? Okay, so when you install the ESP8266 via the Boards Manager, you also get a heap of examples. So under uh, File and Examples, if you scroll down, then under Wi-Fi, ESP8266 Wi-Fi, there's one which is called Range Extender. And surely it can't be that simple. But anyway, all I've done at this stage is I've just changed my the SSID and the password for mine. And basically, I think we're already in uploading mode. So yes, I pressed the button and pushed the little adapter into the computer. So now it should theoretically uh, just compile an update uh, and upload, I should say. Now, the only other thing is what I'd like to do is if there are any changes to this code, I'd like to be able to make those changes over the air. So that's going to be the last little bit to do, but if this works, then that's pretty impressive. I also need to do some things like what range does it extend to, and uh, and also what sort of power requirements are there. Okay, so now I will unplug that and plug in again, and see what comes up now that's in UART mode across the serial. Okay, so that looks like... Yeah, that looks like it's good. Okay, so let's um, let's see if we can't find it on the network. All right, there's my little Wi-Fi extender. Um, now, you know, obviously, if this ever comes to use around the place, I'm going to have to come up with some way of supplying it with power. But just for today, I'll put it back in its cradle, uh, which I use for programming, and I will plug it into via this power monitor. And we'll plug it into the solar power bank. And we'll see what we can come up with. Uh, can we reset that? I have to 
Hold that down. Yep, there we go, that's reset. And we don't want the light on. Okay, good. All right, so we've got five volts, got about 20 milliamps, sort of oscillate between 20 and 50, I'm guessing as, it's, as it finds its way. Um, I'm getting on my phone the fact that it's, um, it's there. It says it's good signal strength. Let's see if I can find out some more information about it. Um, yeah, not much coming up. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, it's just got uh, a link speed of 54 megabits per second. Good signal strength. It's only just upstairs is the, uh, the actual Wi-Fi router anyway. Uh, I'd say that's pretty good. We're gonna, I might take it for a walk down the... Uh, down the road and see how we go for signal strength, but also, uh, yeah, I'm just interested in how much power it uses the further you get away from the uh, the base. So um, let's do that, let's take it for a walk. And the last thing to do before we get this show on the road is to make sure that we can upgrade or reprogram the ESP8266 over the air. Now to this we use a library called Arduino OTA. You'll find details in the example section and there's a couple of programs there. The first one is Basic OTA. This will allow you, if you upload it onto your ESP8266, to put any code onto it over the air. And that's fine, but it'll only work the once. That's not what I want. So I went to look at the next one, which was the example given called OTA LEDs and this one here it shows you how to wrap up the code that you want around an OTA handle uh, which you'll find down here in the loop so I'll put the, all the code into the um, on the blog but basically what I did was I took all of that information and I wrapped up the range extender code in it so I'm calling the host to program at ESP011 OTA so that the next one that I do would be two OTA and so forth so I can identify which one is which and then what I'll do just to show that it's all working is that I will change the actual Wi-Fi ID uh, from where are we we'll change it from 0101 to 0102 and we'll also change it in what it outputs to serial not that that really matters it's really how it's identified on the network which is the important one and then what we'll do is we will go to the port and here you can see that's actually identified here uh, so that's all you need to do really and then we'll upload it so that's recompiling the same sketch again but this time with just a, the difference to the name of the uh, the ID of the Wi-Fi uh, or, or the Wi-Fi extender and then when it actually finishes compiling what it'll do is it will go find that ESP8266 on the network and it'll upload over the air so there you can see it at the bottom there it's uh, uploading and also up the, in the middle here uh, at the top of that window that is it also says uploading that takes a few seconds and this could be anywhere on the network uh, for instance for me it's likely to be in some sort of weatherproof container out there so that would be very convenient all right so now to know whether or not that has worked we'll have to go and have a look at uh, the wi-fi and see if we can see the o2 version the extender ESP0102. Okay, so there it is, updated over the air. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's go for a wander and see how this thing works in the wild. Yep. So um, still showing good signal strength. We're probably about well, we're definitely outside, maybe about 15 meters. Uh, from the router and pretty similar sorts of um, strength showing there. Let's walk it a little bit further, but uh, so far pretty good.
Okay, so I'm probably about 50 metres from the house now, a bit over. The extender I've left on a gate post, which is probably about 15 metres away from where I am. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is exactly the sort of thing I was looking for. Pretty impressive um, to extend the Wi-Fi out into the yard. And we're definitely reaching the limits here. Probably around 70 metres or more from the house around 30 to 40 meters away from the extender but um but still connected and um yeah i think it, what i might do is make another one of these to piggyback off the first one and make a bit of a network around the place i say um, that's the circuit working for this week i think the next thing i'm going to do is to uh, work out how to get power to it along the lines of an 18650 battery um some sort of solar array and charger system but i like it i think this is going to be a winner uh see you next time